Right. Well, time for another lecture. We're on to lecture number five and wrapping up with uh, Newton's laws of motion. So, done one and two, and as you might have guessed, this is Newton's third law of motion. Or this is all about Newton's third law of motion. And luckily, it's kind of the easiest one to state and pretty easy to understand. Um, so this might be a bit on the shorter side for as far as lectures go. Because um, really, at least at one level, you can state Newton's second law as for every action, there is a reaction. And the next, this lecture is basically going to dive into what does that mean in terms of forces and uh, acceleration, uh, different mass, different masses. Okay, so a more detailed statement of Newton's third law would be something like that. Whenever an object exerts a force on a second object, the second object exerts a force of equal magnitude in the opposite direction on the first object. Maybe a little wordy, but um, it's easier to understand maybe with just some examples. Right? So for an example, when you uh, swing a hammer and hit a nail, right? Imagine, let's really call it which one you call the first or the second, but we're moving the hammer, so we'll call that the first object. And uh, you take that first object, when it hits the nail, right, it uh, exerts a force, it pushes down on the nail, it exerts a force on the nail. Turns out the nail exerts an equal amount of force, an equal magnitude of force, but in the opposite direction, being back up onto the hammer. So the hammer comes down, exerts a force downward. The nail reacts by exerting an equal uh, amount of force in the opposite direction, upwards. Um, another example is when you fire uh, a rifle or a gun of some sort. Right? The, there's a force that the gun puts on the bullet in order to shoot it out of the barrel. The, bullet then also exerts an equal amount of force in the opposite direction, back, uh, backwards in this case, on the gun. Right? So that's why we have recoil. Yeah. Alright, so a quick question then. Uh, if a soccer player kicks the ball with 1500 newtons of force, the ball exerts a reaction force against the player's foot of how much? All right, hopefully that was an easy one. It's 1,500 newtons, right? So when you swing uh, your foot at a soccer ball, um, you hit the soccer ball with a certain amount of force, the soccer ball actually pushes back on your foot with that same amount of force. The reason that the soccer ball goes flying off and your foot basically stays where it is is, well, uh, for one, your foot is uh, generally um, more massive than the soccer ball. So the same amount of force exerting on your foot results in a much lower acceleration on your foot in the opposite direction, right? Because remember, the acceleration object is proportional to the force, but also inversely, inversely proportional to the mass of the object. So greater mass of your foot means a lower acceleration already, and beyond that, your foot's also connected to your ankle, to your uh, leg, right? And so your leg actually exerts, uh, kind of, or uh, absorbs some of that force um, in its uh, sort of rotation. But, um, yeah, that's it. All right, so how about another question then? If you have, say, a two-ton car, and uh, it's moving at 60 miles per hour. Um, and it smashes into a six ton truck that was only going at 20 miles an hour. The force of the impact, or the amount of force that each of these uh, automobiles or vehicles experiences, uh, which one is gonna experience a greater force, the car or the truck? And then which one experiences the greater change in uh, velocity? or the greater acceleration, is another way of putting that. 
So yeah, so give it a try. Okay, so once again, I hope you said that, at least for the first uh, question, that it's the same amount of force, right? That is exactly what Newton's third law of motion is all about. If one force, uh, one object, say, imagine the car is the first object, it's moving along, it hits the second object, it exerts a certain amount of force on it, so the car under the truck, the truck will exert an equal amount of force in the opposite direction against the car. So, the reason that the car, we might say, has a much larger um, impact or uh, the, the, the trauma of that, uh, of that impact can be much greater in the car actually comes down to the fact that the car is actually going to accelerate uh, a lot more, or technically decelerate in this case. It's a very fast sort of change of its, of its velocity. So again, from so going back to Newton's second law, the acceleration of an object is equal to the force applied to that object divided by its mass. Right? And again, Newton's third law says the force on each of these objects is the same because the forces are equal and opposite. So when the mass, whichever mass is less, the car in this case, lower uh, mass means a greater acceleration. The, the car experiences a much greater acceleration. Right. So going back to that, uh, almost that first slide uh, statement, or the intro slide statement, um, you could restate Newton's third law of motion as, um, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So if you've ever uh, hit a uh, solid object, like a wall, for whatever reason, you would experience it much more viscerally that you not, or you are not just in, uh, applying a force to the wall, but the wall applies an equal amount of force back onto your hand. Right? Hands probably hurt after that. Okay. So these terms, action and reaction, in sort of the simpler statement of Newton's uh, third law, we just need to remember what they mean in terms of uh, um, forces and how. In particular, actions and reactions can be like equal and opposite. So uh, the word action here essentially just means a force, right? Um, any action in Newton's third law is meant, means any force being applied on, from one object to another object. So I apply a force to this wall, or I apply a force to the floor. Either way, the wall applies the equal amount of force back, and the floor applies the equal amount of force back. Um, yeah. So how can the reaction to an action uh, be equal and opposite? Uh, hopefully you already understand this, or maybe this already makes sense, is that the reaction can be equal, meaning that it's equal in magnitude. It's the same amount of force. So if I come in and I push with my fist, fist with uh, 10 newtons of force um, to my palm, then my palm is actually going to exert an equal amount of force, 10 newtons, back on my fist. Right? So that's what I mean by equal. It's equal in magnitude, or equal in amount. But opposite in direction, right? So the fist comes in one way, and the palm pushes back in the exact opposite direction. And this comes about, well, partly is able to talk about it like this because, again, force is a vector quantity. So force always has a magnitude and a direction. So when you say two forces are equal and opposite, what you're saying is they're equal in magnitude in opposite direction. Yeah. So Newton's third law sort of implies that um, for every action, well, it is says for every action there's a reaction, meaning that there's sort of these, you can think of these ideas as, or this Newton's law in terms of action and reaction pairs, right? So uh, instances of Newton's third law are everywhere, but essentially wherever there's a force applied, there's also an equal opposite force being pushed back. So let's just see some examples of action-reaction pairs. So where you, 
they're all over the place. Wherever a force is applied, there's an action that's the action, there's a reaction. Um, in the case of the tire, right? So when your tire, the tires of the car are spinning, they're actually trying to push against the road that way. But by pushing and spinning that way, we get an action force going from the tire onto the road. We get the road pushing back in the opposite direction, the same amount in the opposite direction. So that's actually what propels the uh, car to go forward, right? It's the reaction to your car is pushing against the, um, the action of your, car, of your tire pushing against the road. Um, yeah. Um, in the case of a rocket, uh, it turns out, we'll look at rockets just a little bit more at the end of this uh, lecture, I think. But a rocket works by pushing gas out the back of the rocket, by shooting gas very quickly and lots of gas um, out of the back of the rocket, or the bottom, whatever, whichever you want to look at it. Um, but the back, you know? And essentially by uh, exerting a force and pushing all that uh, gas to one side, the reaction of that is that the force, or the gas actually exerts a reaction force and pushes the rocket forward. So a rocket doesn't work like a car does. For one thing, there's no tire, or there's no ground to push on in space, so you need other ways to do it. You push on gas one way, expel it, and you shoot your rocket the other way by the reaction. Um, another example might be if you pull on a string, or a spring, sorry, you uh, pull on a spring, the reaction is the spring is pulling back on you. Or pulling it back in the opposite direction. So, you know, it doesn't have to be a spring. If you have a rope and you pull on the rope, then the rope's going to pull an equal amount back on you. Finally, uh, we could have an action like the earth pulls the ball but as it falls down from uh, when it's being released. It looks like from the Tower of Pisa again. But, uh, right, so you drop a ball, the earth is pulling down that ball. The reaction force? Well, oddly enough, it turns out that the ball is pulling up on the earth. It just so happens that the Earth is incredibly massive, so that force, that reaction force, amounts to almost no acceleration of the Earth. You don't change the Earth's motion at all by releasing objects in the air. Cool, so time for another demonstration. Um, again, from the International Space Station. And we're gonna see equal and opposite uh, reactions, or Newton's third law, in action. Good way. Hello again. More basketball stunts that I can't do on the ground. At least not while well, getting this much hang time. <laughs> All right, back to serious business. I've got a basketball right here. Going to be one, object one. I'm the second object. If object two, myself, applies So I'm going to let him uh, do a bit more of the talking in this time rather than keeping him muted. Um, but just to set it up, essentially, because uh, his explanation is a little bit convoluted sometimes, minus two, but, you know, whatever. You're going to get it anyway. Um, is that he's going to have to hold on to this basketball. So he's going to exert, essentially, a force on this basketball, right? So that's our action force. The reaction is the basketball pushes back on you. But the thing that to look for here is that the, uh, the, these forces are equal in magnitude, but the mass of the basketball is so much less than the person that we actually see a noticeable acceleration of the basketball, whereas the mass is so much greater here, the same amount of force produces almost no acceleration. And then after that, uh, he's going to bring another astronaut in there, so they're essentially very similar masses, and when he pushes on that person, and again, uh, action, the reaction is that that person uh, pushes back with the same amount of force, but now the amount of force he has to push to move that person is now enough force to move at him as well. Right? So you see an equal, much more equal sort of uh, result. Uh, force to object one, then that same force will be applied according to Newton's third law by object one onto object two. However, there's a big disparity in the mass. Object one is a very light mass object. Object two, myself, is, is a larger mass object. So I'm going to try to make myself about the same shape as this ball. 
See how that works for us. And I'm going to apply that force. You saw that force applied to the ball made it accelerate quite a bit. It really didn't accelerate me much at all. You can use third law again, but this time we're going to use two similarly mass objects. Joe and I have about the same mass. So Joe, get into a ball. I'll do the same. I'm going to face you this way so I don't throw you into something you can't see. Right. Now I'm going to get into a ball behind Joe, and I'm going to apply a force to him. All right, so there you go. With the basketball, very low mass, so the force he had to, that he put on it was not very large, but accelerated quite a lot. Right? That same amount of force was pushed back from the ball, but again, he's very much more massive, so that force didn't really accelerate much. He did see it actually push him a little bit. It started to actually rotate, he wanted to rotate a little bit. Whereas with the two people, they're both, they're both the same amount of, similar, very similar amount of mass, so the amount of force he has to push to move that person is enough force also to get him to start accelerating the opposite direction. Okay, so you might already know this, kind of gave this away earlier maybe, but uh, let's make sure, right? So when you step off of a curb, the Earth is pulling you downward, right? There's that force of gravity, the force of Earth, the Earth's gravity pulling you down. Um, and, well, Newton's third law says that your, that action of the Earth pulling on you is, uh, will cause an equal and opposite reaction of you pulling on the Earth. So why do you not see the Earth moving? Take, take a crack at that. All right, so hopefully you said that, yes, the Earth actually would does technically move, but it's imperceptible. The reason again being that the Earth is pulling you down with a certain amount of force, and that's uh, you know your mass multiplied by the acceleration of gravity. So that's a certain amount of force pulling you down. You exert an equal and opposite amount of force pulling the Earth up, but that force is so small compared to you know relate in relation to the mass of the Earth. The Earth is incredibly massive that that force causes almost no acceleration at all. There's almost no change in the Earth's motion from that reaction force. All right, so these uh, action and reaction pairs is also not just the reason or the way that uh, cars can drive along the road, can, uh, their tires can push against the road and the road pushes back. Um, it's also the same reason where the tire, uh, well, not sorry to that, but um, same sort of idea uh, for why we're actually able to walk at all, right? So when you uh, when you push uh, against the floor, right? Whenever you go to walk, you don't really notice it because it's usually for most people very, you know, mindless or. A very difficult thing to do, but when you walk along the floor, um, you actually are pushing against the floor. So you're pushing to the back of you, right? If I walk, you can be more comfortable or conscious about it and sort of like over exaggerate the motion where with your back foot, you kind of like even twist it as you push against the floor, but that's just an exaggerated version of how you're actually walking, right? So when you regularly are just walking, you're pushing against the floor towards that way. The reaction is that the floor pushes you in the opposite direction. And that, well, you're not moving the floor, you're, again, you're not really going to move the Earth because that uh, push is very little compared to the size of the Earth, but the reaction force is enough to propel you forward, to accelerate you forward. Okay, so back to rockets briefly. Again, this is sort of the one way of understanding how rockets work is essentially that the, uh, well, when the rock is just sitting on a launch pad, there's no forces going on, so the, it's not going to accelerate, it's not going to change its motion at all, it's going to stay at rest. However, when the uh, rocket, uh, the engines fire, they ignite this gas and expel it, they push it out of the bottom of the, or the back of the rocket, the reaction to that is that the rocket is being, gets pushed upwards, right? Action, gas pushed down, reaction, rocket pushed up.
But in the case of action and reaction uh, pairs, or action force, reaction force, there's never a cancellation because the forces are always on separate objects. So like um, firing a bullet from a gun, the gun exerts a force on the bullet to expel it outwards. The bullet exerts an equal amount of force back on the gun, right? but those two forces are on different things. One's on the bullet, one's on the gun, and there's no, not going to be any, uh, any way that those forces sum up, right? because they're on different things. Similarly, when I exert a, a force on the ground by, to walk, I exert a force pushing backwards, right? exerting a force on one object, the ground, the ground exerts a force back on me, but on my foot, a different object from the ground, and pushes me forward. So just something to keep in mind that, you know, I've made a big deal about net force and understanding that, all, that we can imagine the total amount of forces on an object to be the net force on that object. So maybe a number of different things are pushing on something in a number of different ways. We could kind of imagine summing all of those up to say what's the net force on an object. In terms of action and reaction, those are always on different objects. So there's never a cancellation of action reaction forces. Cool. Um, so yeah, so that's all I got for Newton's third law. Like I said, it's a little bit short, um, but there you go. Enjoy that. And I think next time we're going to talk about um, something very much related to Newton's uh, laws, Newton's second law, third law, um, and his first law too. A concept of momentum, yeah, and gonna keep going from there. All right, so uh, have a good one, and I'll see you later.